Hey, welcome to the first lesson of mastering icon fonts on the web. In this lesson, you'll learn about web fonts. Now, as a web designer, you are very familiar with desktop fonts. They're the ones you use in your design application. But what if you want to bring those fonts to the web? For example, let's say you're designing a web page and you have a great font on your desktop that greatly enhances your design and you want to use it. But porting it from desktop to web is not that simple. You could specify the font family via CSS and on your computer you'll get a good result, but you have no guarantee that whoever is watching or visiting your website will get the same result. You don't know if they have that font installed in their, in their system, so instead they'll get a default font. A solution to this, which was practiced for many, many years, and unfortunately, to some extent, it's still being practiced today, is by using images. So you would take that piece of text with the special font, you would export it as an image, usually a GIF or a PNG because of the transparency, and then you would load it. And that way you make sure everyone gets uh the same experience basically they will see the font or the text in the same way now this is a flawed approach because images mean extra http requests and that means increased page load time not to mention a very poor um, maintenance efficiency let's say for example that you have a menu with 10 items in it and you want to use a special font for it well that means 10 different images if you put the hover and active states on it, then you have 30 images. Now imagine you have to change those menu items. You have to change the text to something else. That's 30 images you got to change. And what if you want to make the text bigger? Well, you can't just blow up the images. They will look all pixelated. So as you can see, this is not a good approach. Even if you decide to use CSS sprites, it's still not a good approach because you still have to maintain 30 images. A much better solution to this is by using a web font. Now, this is something you can instruct your browser to load and then render text with it. There are lots of advantages to this, but the main one is that you don't work with images anymore. You're just dealing with text. So if you have to change it, you can do so just via CSS. It's really simple. You can change the font size, line height, color, everything. And also no more images means fewer HTTP requests, which will decrease the page load. That's always a good thing. Now, how exactly do you install a web font? Well, there are two ways. First, you can use an external service like Typekit or Google Fonts. These services will host the fonts, so all you gotta do is instruct your CSS to load them from there and you're all set. The second method is to manually download the font files from sites like fonts.com, myfonts.com, fontsquirrel, etc. In this case, the fonts will be installed directly in your website's root directory. This means the fonts will be loaded from your website's own server instead of someone else's server. This is a safer method because it means you're not depending on a third-party resource, but it also implies more work because you have to download the fonts manually, you have to upload them, and then use a font face declaration to use them. Either way, these are the basics of web fonts. Icon fonts are very similar and you'll learn about them in the next lesson. I'll see you there.